Welcome to Babington Unlimited, coming up on the show. The Babington World Federation shares its plans on safely and securely bringing badminton back. Our priority has always been the safety of all those who come to our events, athletes, their entourage, officials, spectators and etc. Retired Chinese legend Gao Ling talks about her easygoing and adventurous personality on and off the court. I and Team India head coach Pulela Gopichan keeps his players motivated by taking his training online. Finally, some good news for badminton fans. After a seven-month hiatus, the Denisa Denmark Open 2020 is set to bring back top-class badminton next week. The BWF recently was also pleased to announce that the Asian leg of the adjusted HSBC BWF World Tour 2020 will take place in January 2021. On the 29th of September, the governing body for the sport hosted its first ever virtual press conference with the global media to disclose its plans for international badminton's safe return to action. Given the challenges we faced, this was the best possible solution under the circumstances. Our priority has always been the safety of all those who come to our events, athletes, their entourage, officials, spectators and etc. I am confident that with our safety protocols in place, the three events will kickstart badminton successfully return in 2021, which hopefully will help the world heal from the trauma of this year's pandemic. Bangkok, Thailand will stage the Asian leg that will feature two Super 1000 tournaments, with the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals 2020 concluding a three-week badminton bonanza. Working closely with the Government of Thailand, BWF and the Badminton Association of Thailand completed a comprehensive study to ensure a safe COVID-19 framework for all parties during the competition period. The Badminton Association of Thailand considers it an honor to conduct three major events back to back. It is our strong intention to help athletes return to the tournaments during this trying period. We are highly grateful to the Royal Thai government for their sincere and unstinting support. A lot of careful planning has been prepared to ensure the safety and well-being of our stakeholders. The tournaments and relevant arrangements are still at the highest standard. The decision to push the Asian leg to 2021 was not an easy one. BWF needed to recognize the scale of logistics involved to ensure a successful organization of three consecutive tournaments. The Asian leg has only just been confirmed, and uh, I'm, hope, I'm sure you will appreciate setting up that level of events is, is a fairly complex and big exercise. So, uh, simply due to time constraints, uh, we, we, we are not able to actually field it before in January, and January has felt to be the, the best place to not only ensure that we can get all the logistical arrangements in place for both ourselves, the tournament setup, but also for athletes and and the member federations to actually organize that they can get to the event. The constant uncertainty of the pandemic has seen extreme travel limitations. These restrictions have a direct impact on international badminton, especially when the sport involves the movement of a massive playing entourage. Every time we have a tournament or in the, in the normal tournament structure, we, we are running uh, within the, the tour structures or major events. We have three, four, maybe and sometimes about 400 athletes coming from 40, 50, 60 different countries. And the big challenge here is that we need to have uh, these athletes not only getting out of their countries, there are simply uh, has been a lot of travel restrictions getting out of your own countries, uh, but let alone then the challenge of getting into other countries, uh, quarantine restrictions and that kind of thing, which is being dealt with very differently uh, around the world that creates a, a complex a complexity in terms of getting that many people together in one location to play our international tournaments. That's what we are trying to bridge by uh, creating this cluster 
uh, where we at least can play a number of tournaments in the same country, in the same location, which decreases complexity, which is something we are looking into, whether we can replicate that into further uh, clusters in, in 2021. As the world continues its fight against COVID-19, the safety of the international badminton community remains BWF's top priority. These are trying times, but there's a growing hope that these small steps will slowly bring back top-class badminton action. Although we have only three months to prepare for the events, I strongly believe in the capabilities of the BWF and the BAT and all stakeholders to make these tournaments safe and successful for all participants. Gao Ling is beyond a shadow of a doubt one of the most successful doubles specialists winning multiple major titles in mixed and women's doubles. Babington's most decorated Olympian with two mixed doubles gold and a silver and bronze in women's doubles, the Chinese legend is also the record holder of nine medals at the World Championships, of which four are gold. 11 years after her retirement, the 41-year-old is happily married and actively promoting Babington. 现在主要是在体育大学当老师就不管他自己选择什么项目有的人说你自身这么好你为什么不教羽毛球我说那要等他们自己的喜爱他如果不喜爱羽毛球他就就你让他去练习羽毛球让他去学羽毛球他都不会很上心的练现在我们家是姐
，感觉自己还能就是沉得住气，跟张云说，哎，没有关系，反正我们拿过了，你不要老是想啊，怎么怎么的，就是就叫这样说，我说不要跟人家较劲啊，怎么我们只要怎么怎么怎么样啊，因为前面也有就是他们裁判有误判我们，张云有点着急了，很生气嘛。然后包括等等一些情况，就是我会跟他说，就是我我在打比赛的时候还要跟他说，就是像安慰他一样，我说没关系，说你还是可以的，你还是怎么样的，我说我们要怎么怎么样，就是就这个比赛就可以了，就是就不管是我们落后的时候，我说我们只要不放弃，我们只要一分分的拿，所以说就觉得可能就是跟小的时候就是经历过这些事情，就就让我在比赛的时候就这种紧张的情况下，我也能够就是就那种坦然面对吧，应该是这么说。We continue our conversation with Gao Ling after this short break, as she reminisces about her 2000 Olympics winning moments. 当时我就觉得啊，开心开心开心，就一一直开心，然后就就什么事情全部忘记了，就自己就在在原地就不停的蹦啊不停的。张军不是躺地上，他两次不是躺地上，我就第一次我就记得我是在蹦。And India coach Pulela Gopichand reveals how going digital has helped his team stay connected with badminton. Welcome back to Babington Unlimited. Let's continue our chat with BWF Hall of Famer Gao Ling. A former world number one in mixed and women's doubles, her partnership with Huang Sui produced three world titles. Gao also found success at the Olympics with Zhang Jun by capturing back-to-back -back gold medals in 2000 and 2004. 零零年跟零四年都挺让我记忆深刻的，因为是两种。完全不同嘛，因为零四年我就之前我说的我受伤了嘛，包括打到呃八月份奥运会的时候，我确实也是没有像两千年就是拿完冠军之后，我记得两千年是就是当那一分落地，人家说呃苏比十一呃就是中国的张军高龄赢，真的，当时我就觉得啊开心开心开心，就一一直开心，然后就就什么事情全部忘记了，就自己就在在原地就不停的蹦啊不停的，张军不是躺地上，他两次不是躺地上，我就第一次我就记得我是在蹦。然后第二次我是觉得，呃，当那个艾姆斯把球打到网子上面，我们赢了这一分的时候，我就觉得，当时整个人一下，好像很安静，就感觉整个人就本来从这个点一下到了这个点，就这样子的感觉，就是那个气一下子这种感觉。因为受伤了嘛，受伤了之后就觉得，哎呀，自己还能很平和的还站在这里，就这种感觉嘛，就是就是我没有说。呃，不行了，然后被别人就是来个来个担架把你抬下去的感觉，因为当时确实是自己想了很多，就说我一定要呃，就是整个比赛能够完整的打下来，然后不要说我打了半途，我被人家从从场上抬下去，就是就是这种感觉。所以当时那一分一落下来的时候，就自己整个人就是很安静，也没有说很兴奋，但是呃，兴奋后面还是就是你要颁奖的时候还是觉得挺开心的，自己在这个情况下还拿了这个冠军，我们又卫冕了，确实是。其实我刚开始还是比较偏女装的，就是就不不光是两千年拿了这个混双冠军，我还是自己比较偏女装的，因为我觉得混双只是我一个副项，像像是我的一个副业一样的，就是我的主业还是在女装，因为我是女双才进的国家队嘛，我不是说靠混双才进的，因为以前也没有混双组啊，以前都是呃就是觉得好的队员就全部都是尖项嘛，我们以前都是尖项的，所以说当时自己觉得。我是一个女双的，嗯，我不知道，我是女双的，就是这种感觉，就自己一直觉得我是女双的，就这样子。
Gao Ling was one of many players who competed in two disciplines, but definitely one of the very few to have excelled in both. Given the changes in the dynamics of badminton these days, the Chinese shuttler believes it's harder for players to follow in her footsteps. Yeah, 因为打了两下之后不行了,拉伤了,这里拉伤,这里拉伤,所以等等这些问题的话会影响到他们坚强。Gao Ling is a role model for many young players on tour now, so the question is, are there any up-and-coming players that have caught her eye? 应该来说的话,没有特别欣赏的,就是像以前欣赏之前的那些老前辈的这种球员啊或者怎么样的。我觉得现在的球员还是缺乏一些担当度或者是他们的这种就是在就是还没有拿到奥运冠军的时候自己整个的这种我觉得优秀运动员包括为什么说李宗伟就是没有拿过奥运冠军有些人还是觉得很喜
be whether it's the Zoom app or whether it's uh, Google Meets. I think overall players have uh, started to react, and also it was important that we started something quickly because we didn't want players also to lose the discipline part of it. So we're looking at options. Uh, the first week was we would give um, give the schedule on WhatsApp. Uh, but uh, I think uh, then we realized that uh, we have a channel of doing it, and it was pretty easy. So we just log on to the uh, to the uh, Zoom application every morning and evening, uh, so that we can see the players and also the coaches uh, are there present with strength and conditioning guys. So we're trying to manage and monitor many of the players. Some of the top players like Saina, Sindhu, Srikant uh, have individual um, fitness trainers. So uh, we have them working with those fitness trainers online. But also for the larger group of people across the country, somebody who is in Kerala, which is down south, or somebody who is in Punjab, up north, I think everybody gets together on the Zoom for a uh, common class. So we have uh, some workouts of uh, strength, some workouts of physio and rehab, and some workouts of badminton uh, with the coaches. So we kind of um, have devised different schedules for each of them to join in. One of the things what's also happened is that few of the states have um, opened up, uh, have allowed players to play. Some of the players have access to play, so, so the timing was a challenge. But also for me, I think it was very important that uh, the lockdown typically should not be a case where people, players lose the basic connect and also the discipline. And um, it's important that you also keep them busy because um, they are always um, in, in, in their lives uh, till now, they've always looked at uh, sport and sessions after sessions. So they've been busy. So you just leave them and to allow them to actually have bad habits creep in or lazy schedules creep in would be a problem to wash off later. The way I looking at it, because um, even today uh, we have sessions partially started practice, but I don't think we'll be able to start off having group training sessions or physio training or things like that. So I think there will be some amount of these kind of sessions which will continue. And I believe that this is here to stay. In some senses, online is even better because sometimes uh, you are able to watch many people at one stretch uh, sometimes. So I think in certain ways, uh, I find it beneficial uh, to monitor um, because uh, except for the technology hitch at some point of time, otherwise players are on time. Uh, they kind of, you can watch all of them and, and in one screen, so it really helps. Sport definitely has been affected. And uh, for many players, um, this, the careers are small. And when you look at somebody who thinks that they have two years left, by the end of the pandemic, probably there's only a year left or less than that. So you have had players retiring who would have probably loved to go out in a big way. Some big names have gone out. Similarly, um, players who are, say, sub-junior or junior players who are thinking and expecting that this will be my chance to win a, a provincial championships or a, um, national championships or a world championships. For them, they miss out on an opportunity in these big events. Uh, in many fields, it is that uh, you have a 30-year-old career, so one year probably doesn't matter. But uh, in sport, it's a short career, and a year if you lose is actually a lot of time lost. So in the initial months, um, people enjoyed the rest, I would say, for a week, 10 days, or uh, for a month or two. But I think now it's uh, kind of uh, frustrating to see that uh, things haven't started back and uh, it kind of also affects um, your incomes and professional um, things for players, for coaches, for support teams 
and uh, the overall uh, infrastructure of uh, sport is hit so it's it definitely hurts for sport that's it for this episode of babington unlimited join us again next week as the voice of babington jill clark takes some questions from her adoring fans essential to have a good delivery um being able to articulate enough to express yourself clearly. And Carolina Marin remembers her impressive victory over Tai Tzu Ying at last year's Victor China Open. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfbabinton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. Until next time, keep safe.